Welcome back, everyone. In the previous lecture, we saw a single prompt for a single text generation response. Let's now explore a chat that has a historical message conversation between the user and the model. All right, here I am back at a Jupyter Notebook. I've already imported GenAI, and I've configured it with my API key. Next, what I'm going to do is create an instance of the model. Just like we did last time, we're going to call model, And I'm actually going to pass in the exact same model, Gemini-Pro. And then in order to initiate and tell Gemini that I want this to be a chat conversation, I need to create a chat instance by saying chat is equal to the model. And then I'm going to start a chat. And something to keep in mind that makes this different from text generation is instead of calling this off the model, the rest of the methods, I'm going to call the methods off of this chat. So if I take a look at what chat is, it's this chat session. And the chat session will then record a history of messages that are back and forth between me and the model. And that's nice because I can refer to historical messages without needing to restate everything every single time. Let's show you an example of what I mean by that. I'm going to get a response. And to send the message to the model, I say chat send underscore message. And here you can provide your prompt. For example, um, help me plan some activities for my trip to Paris. I go ahead and run that. And just like before, I can grab the text response by saying print response dot text. And I can see it tells me to visit the Eiffel Tower, explore the Louvre, take a stroll, visit Notre Dame, etc. So because this is a historical chat conversation, that means there's actually a chat history. So I can say chat.history, and it's going to have a recording of the different parts. And what's interesting about this is it understands the text that the user sent. So notice there's now this idea of a role for the user here for this text, as well as the text that the model sent. So the role of model indicates that the model returned this text, and the role of user indicates that the text was returned or basically sent over by the human. So What's nice about this is I can keep the conversation going simply by sending another message. So I'm going to comment that out and we'll explore that chat history in a little more detail in just a conversation. But what's nice about this is I just keep the same response going. So I can say response is equal to chat dot send underscore message. And then I can refer to something from the history by just saying, uh, give me more detail about your last point. So notice I'm not explicitly saying that I want to check out these uh, Lafayette galleries. Instead, I'm just asking for that last point. And because it has a history, it understands the context of what I mean by that. So let's print out now the response text here. I'll go ahead and run that. And so again, I didn't refer specifically to this shop at the galleries. Instead, I just asked it about the last point and it gives me information about that last point. So that means I can always go to chat history and see the historical parts of my conversation. Usually what you're probably going to end up doing here is actually looping through this. So for example, I can say for every item in the chat history, go ahead and print the item and then print, let's say, two new lines so I can separate out these objects so I can understand what's going on. So note that each item in the chat history has this idea of parts, and then it has the text and the role. So if I were to say item dot role, I can see it goes user, model, user, model, which makes sense. I can also grab the actual text, but the thing to note there is that the text portion is underneath this parts attribute. And the parts is actually then, um, although you can't really see it here, it's technically uh, an array or a list. So that means I can say item dot parts and note that it contains this list, which just has that single item of text. In the future, you'll have more options because you will be able to ask for more candidates. Again, we'll talk about parameters later on. And so then I actually just want to grab this text attribute. And so this allows me to actually grab the text. And of course, you could put this in some sort of while loop to keep the conversation going until you say something like quit. All right, before we conclude this lecture, I quickly wanted to mention the fact that you can actually perform a token count using the model call. Remember, this is calling off the model, not the chat. 
which means it works for both text generation and chat conversations. So you can simply say model, and remember if I scroll all the way up here, model was just me calling generative model, it's not the same thing as the chat, and I'll scroll all the way back down, I can simply say model dot count underscore tokens, and then I can pass in any string here, and it's gonna return the total token count. This will be important later on if you start getting charged um, and you're paying, you wanna maybe understand how many tokens am I passing in, am I hitting the limit, etc. So for example, I can say, um, this is a random string of characters, and it's gonna report back how many tokens this actually counts as. Keep in mind, it's not actually sending this to the model, it's just running its tokenizer and then checking the length of the amount of tokens that you're sending over. This works, again, in the context of both chats and text generation because you're just doing it off the model. Okay, that's it for this lecture on chat. Let's talk about generation configuration parameters, things like uh, temperature and max output tokens, that sort of thing in the next lecture.